Let's talk flatbeds. Welcome back to Runaway Roses. I'm gonna go over some pros and cons about having a flatbed for a truck camper as well as some things to consider if you think about going that route. These are just my opinions based on my experience of driving this truck for the past 8,000 miles with two different truck campers on it. So some of you may have some different experiences or different concerns, that sort of thing. Uh, but I just figured I'd share with you some of the things that I've experienced as well as, you know, how I've addressed them and, uh, you know, some of the pros and cons about having a, a flatbed for a truck camper. So I got more pros than I do cons. And then I'm going to go through those. And then I'm going to tell you just some overall things to consider if you're thinking about getting a flatbed. So let's start with the number one pro. So my pros and cons list are not in any particular order. I'm just kind of running down the list as I thought of them. So the number one pro that I wrote down was the easier loading. Uh, the fact that uh, there's no sidewalls to a uh, pickup bed uh, that you gotta squeeze the, the camper in between, you know, which is usually real close within an inch or two. And uh, so it's kind of nice just to be able to, as long as you get the height set, you can kind of back right underneath the truck camper. And that part of it is definitely easier I'm still real picky about how I get it loaded. So I still try to line it up just perfect. And that does still take a little bit more time because I, you know, got some center points on, on my setup where I like to back it the truck under two to get the camper just perfect. But overall, you don't have those, the sidewall concerns of the pickup truck bed. My number two pro is going to be the additional storage that you get by having a flat bed for the truck camper. In my particular bed, I bought the skirted bed, which has the storage boxes on both sides. However, what I'm mainly talking about is all the additional storage you have up top. So uh, as you can see, I built the uh, just some wood rails there to block that in. So that way, if I wanna just throw something back there, I can, as you can see here, I got actually some, some rugs, outdoor rugs in a plastic bag there. And uh, I also store uh, step stool back there. So having that additional storage is great. Um, you know, some people do put the, the boxes up top and, uh, the boxes really look great. However, in my particular case at this time, I didn't want the, the storage boxes. Let me pull that rail off and let you get a better look. So as you can see here, without the rails up there, there's a lot of storage area underneath so if you do somebody decides to put storage boxes you can put some big ones up there and be able to store a lot of extra stuff you know whatever it is and uh although you do have to consider all the extra weight by the things you might be adding and putting in those boxes but uh, in this particular case as you can see there's the stuff that i built this wood rail here i built just as kind of a precautionary measure uh, just in case the truck camper would want to slide side to side. I've never had a truck camper move uh, side to side on the flatbed. However, I just built that just in case. So with my uh, walls that I built that I just took off, uh, if the camper was to, to move, it would bump up against the, the framing of the rails that I built that go down in the stake pockets. So I have one of these on each side, and then that gives me some additional storage uh, just to put some stuff in there. Sometimes I'll put some firewood in there and that sort of thing. Also, depending on the size of your flatbed and how you have it loaded, you may have some storage in front of the camper as well. So in this case, I have my spare tire in front of the camper Go around to the other side. So on the other side, I just have some open storage where I store some chairs, but I could put whatever I wanted in there. So it gives you a lot of extra storage. And on this side, I've hardly really even put anything up there. So I got a lot of extra storage and room to grow. My number three pro is when you don't have the truck camper on the back of the truck, you got a huge truck bed to use for whatever you want. I've moved furniture on there and some other lumber and all kinds of things so it really makes for a big huge truck bed to move you know anything on so however the downside is it's just a perfectly flat bed so in my case i built the side rails as well as some swing away 
gates to keep stuff in. So in case I just want to throw stuff in the back, I can basically use it like a pickup bed. However, uh, if you don't do that, then you're gonna have to strap stuff down really well and uh, probably do that anyhow. However, uh, the big bed, you know, with nothing on it is a big pro for me. My number four pro is having the short tie downs. So I really like that versus having a, a long tie down that goes all the way down to a frame mount. Uh, basically having the shorter tie down turnbuckles, it really gives less room for movement than, than a large one would have. So, and uh, these have worked great. These particular ones are the, the Happy Jack Quick Loads and they've worked great. We took them across the country and back and uh, they worked really well for us. As you can see, I have them tied into the side rail here and uh, this is a steel bed. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this on a, an aluminum bed, um, but you can see I had an original hole up here and uh, it was up there when we had our Bigfoot truck camper. It just sat on the back of the truck a little differently. So when we got the Lance, I drilled another hole, 5 8 hole, and uh, they just work great. They hold the camper down snugly. They're short, very little room for movement, and the, the truck camper hasn't gone anywhere. So if you do already have a truck camper and you're thinking about going to a flatbed and you already have, say, some fast gun turnbuckles or something similar, some the standard length, I would highly encourage you to get some short ones because I've seen plenty of people use the long ones and tie them in sideways, you know, however they want to do it. And uh, do it oftentimes similar to that. And, uh, but if you think about it, there's really not as much side to side control with these, um, you know, versus the short ones. There's very little movement that can happen versus having a long one that's just extended out a little bit more than probably should be for this application, in my opinion. Uh, you know, to each your own. Just be safe and however you decide to tie it down. This method has worked great for me, but uh, I would encourage you to get some short ones, whether it be the Happy Jacks or the, uh, they make the, the shorter fast gun turnbuckles as well. My number five pro is you don't have to buy frame mount tie down hardware if you're gonna get a flatbed truck. So um, you may already have these if you have a pickup truck and you're converting to a flatbed, you may have to remove them. However, if you don't have either one, then you don't, fortunately, you won't have to buy some hardware like this because it is very expensive. This goes on the pickup truck version uh, for a truck camper. You'd, it would mount underneath the bed and then it has the removable arm that comes out where you would tie down the turnbuckle to the frame mount. So. And these are very expensive, like I said, so that is a big pro that you don't have to purchase this on top of the price of purchasing a flatbed, which is already expensive just by itself. So my number six pro is you're going to have to put a plug in somewhere for your truck camper on the back of your flatbed. And the pro part of it is you can put it wherever you want. So, and in my case, we had the Bigfoot truck camper first and I had already installed a seven pin plug back there. So when we got the Lance, I had to put in a proprietary Lance plug that goes with this camper. So uh, it's nice just to be able to mount it wherever you want. That way you can keep the cable nice and short and it doesn't have to run all the way down the side like it would inside a uh, pickup or possibly even over the back uh, near the bumper to plug it in. Let's check it out and see what I did. So everybody's setup's probably gonna be a little bit different, but what I did was I first started out with mounting the seven pin plug just right along the back wall. And uh, so that worked out nice. I just ran it up through the bottom of the floor. And then up top here, I just uh, mounted in a seven, uh, it's not a seven, I think it's a six, I'm not sure, whatever it is, it's the proprietary Lance plug that they use that comes right out from the corner of the camper. And uh, the Lance has a nice short cable to begin with. So that way you can keep everything nice and tidy or if you have a camper that requires a seven pin plug, you can just kind of mount it wherever you want. So that worked out really well for me. So that is a big pro coming in at number six. 
Now I'm gonna go over my list of cons. I only got four of them. And I'm gonna start out with my biggest one, which is number one is the height of the overall flatbed unloaded or loaded really. Uh, but just to start with unloaded, it's about six inches taller than what my old pickup truck bed was. My old uh, Ram 3500 3, that I had, one ton dually, the bed in it was right at 37 inches unloaded. And uh, the flatbed on top of this 4500 is uh, right at 43 inches. So it adds an extra six inches to that uh, to that overall height. So uh, that did make some things more difficult for us as far as the we are limited with the height in our garage. So that pushes the camper up an extra six inches and uh, we can get it in, but it's much tighter and uh, just some more complications as far as that went. But let's take a little closer look. So when I'm saying it's taller, I am saying from basically the center of the flatbed to the ground. So my gr driveway is not level, otherwise I get it out and, and measure for you. But I know it's uh, when it's unloaded, it's right at 43 inches. So it is much higher in the way the, uh, the overall rig sits um, just because of the additional six inches. Even, I believe in most cases, even if you have a, a pickup truck already and you purchase a flatbed to put on it, most of them are gonna add about six or seven inches just due to the way they're constructed. They usually have uh, three or four inch uh, frame members that run down the frame. Then it's got usually some three inch uh, cross members and uh, you know, it all adds up. So it does take up some additional height or add some additional height to your, your bed and the height of your overall rig. I did partially compensate for the height, even though the the Happy Jacks were, they would work to basically raise it up another six inches. I did purchase these extensions and put on all four corners of the camper just to help kind of compensate for that extra six inches worth of height and uh, just kind of be safe and uh, loading and unloading of the truck camper. So that is my number one, is the overall height deck of the flatbed, loaded or unloaded. So my number two con, I've already kind of touched on, uh, but that is when you don't have a camper on the back of your, your flatbed, the positive, like I mentioned earlier, is you have a huge flatbed, but the con is you gotta build some sort of rail, really, or have some boxes or something to help kind of enclose the flatbed. Uh, if, you're, if you're just like me and you're gonna, you know, throw some lumber back there or some boxes of furniture or whatever you might use your flatbed for. Uh, you may need some sort of rail system to go around and uh, just to hold some stuff in. So that is kind of a con because you might have to build it or pay somebody or, or whatever the case is, or you just gotta strap stuff down really well all the time because the flatbeds are pretty slick. Um, I had kind of partially thought about doing like a line next type of thing on the top of ours. I haven't done that yet. I uh, haven't ha had a need to really, but I just figured maybe it would give the rubber mat a little bit more grip. Um, I don't know, we'll see if I really end up doing that or not. Uh, but it is pretty slick and stuff will slide around real easy on it uh, if it gets wet and you just throw in some, some whatever in the back of your truck. So that's my number two con is you really need some sort of rail system to go all the way around your flatbed just for some general junk storage that you're throwing stuff in the back. My number three con is that when you buy a flatbed, whether it's for a cab chassis truck or a pickup truck version and you put it on there, they don't come equipped just to go ahead and put a truck camper on. That's not what they're designed for. However, there are some that are designed specifically for that, uh, but just a general flatbed is not. so. As you saw earlier in my case, you'd have to either figure out some way of mounting uh, the, the tie down turnbuckle yourself, or you might have to get a stake pocket tie down similar to this where it's got a, got a pin and uh, then you, you can either put a bolt through there or pin this. So you can buy these and uh, 
You, know, you could use those on a trailer or a flatbed or whatever. So you could put four of those in each four corners. That may be an option. It does shorten the distance to the tie down in most cases um, that I've seen. So um, there's ways around that, I suppose, but that is an option. So that is one of the, the cons is you kind of have to figure out, figure out your own rigging system and each camper and truck uh, flatbed is going to be different, you know, the, your setup. So you kind of have to figure it out on your own. You can't just go buy a flatbed necessarily and go buy a camper and go to the store and, you know, expect to just have everything you need to put it on there, plug it in, strap it down, and have everything safe. So you have to kind of work all the system out per your, your rig, your setup. So that is my number three con. My fourth and final con is that when I first got the flatbed and putting a truck camper on it, I had some concerns about the camper possibly moving side to side. And uh, on our last trip, we drove 5,000 miles and the camper never did shift side to side. However, I did go ahead and build these boxes prior to our trip. And uh, although we drove several thousand, few thousand miles without the boxes as well, and I've never had a problem, however, I feel better knowing that uh, with those boxes in the, on, along the side, uh, that if their camper does move, it's gonna shift and it's gonna hit the, the walls that I built for the, the side rails that are stuck down in the stake pockets of the flatbed. So basically, it just makes me feel better knowing that the camper really can't shift too far side to side either way. I got it in there pretty snug. Um, so it's not like if you have a pickup truck, you got the wheel wells in there where the the uh, truck camper could just slide side, slide side to side just a little bit and bump the wheel well, but you know it's not gonna go too far. With the flatbed, it seems like there's nothing uh, up there until you maybe build something or you mount something up there to just secure the camper a little bit better. So there you go. There's my list of pros and cons for having a flatbed for a truck camper. I do wanna go over some things to consider if you're thinking about getting a flatbed for a truck camper, whether you're gonna go from having a pickup truck and converting it to a flatbed, or you're just gonna buy a cab chassis truck like I did, and then pick out whichever type of bed that you want. Uh, so, like on this particular truck, like I said, this is a cab chassis truck, so this is what they call a 60 inch cab chassis. From the back of the cab uh, to the center of the axle, 60 inches. And, uh, or you can get like an 84 inch and I think you can get an even longer one if you want. Uh, if you get a, if you're just gonna convert a pickup, an eight foot bed pickup, uh, those are usually like around eight foot four. And this one uh, on a cab chassis uh, is, uh, this particular bed is nine foot four. So it's actually a foot longer than just changing over uh, on a, you know, one ton dually type truck or single rear wheel eight foot bed. So um, that's something to consider, depending on the length of the bed, your setup, uh, how your camper's gonna sit on there. It's kind of hard to know until you actually do it, uh, but you can basically take some measurements to have a pretty good idea. And the second thing to consider is whether or not you go steel bed or you want an aluminum bed. I mean, obviously the aluminum bed's gonna be a little bit lighter. A uh, steel bed's obviously gonna be a little bit heavier because uh, the, the gauge of the steel's thicker and it's stronger and that sort of thing. So depending on your payload of your truck, you may want to opt for the aluminum over the steel or the steel over the aluminum. If you got plenty of payload, uh, you know, steel's a great way to go I and mean, super strong, right? So, uh, and it worked real well for us as far as uh, drilling the holes for the tie downs. I wouldn't say I'd recommend that necessarily for anybody, really. Uh, however, especially on the aluminum, aluminum's softer than steel. So, um, you yeah, gotta consider way yeah, uh, your what your what your payload is for your truck and how much the bed may weigh that you choose. Some are heavier than others. The skirted beds like this with the storage in them are pretty heavy versus just a, a flat bed with without any boxes. You can save a lot of weight that way. You can get these flat beds and they can come with a, a two inch receiver or a two and a half inch receiver. Uh, often from what I've seen in uh, my research. Uh, this particular one has a two inch receiver. I would have preferred a two and a half, to be quite honest. Uh, if I was gonna, you can, if you custom order them, 
uh, depending on who you get it from, they will put a two and a half inch receiver in there. This one, I just found that it was available and it had two inch, it was rated at I believe 18,000 pounds and I wanna say 1,800 pounds of tongue weight. So it's plenty strong enough uh, for, for my needs. Uh, so, you know, it's fine, but that is an option out there. Um, or if you need to use a super truss uh, hitch extension, then, you know, this may or may not work for you uh, because you may need, if you have a pickup truck, they can get the additional hitch that mounts onto the factory, uh, along with the factory hitch to use the super truss for the, for the double bar. Uh, on this case, uh, I've already talked to a guy about possibly welding in. He said he'd probably basically build a whole new hitch system underneath it, uh, to actually build basically a second, uh, super truss style hitch in order to use the double bar uh, for the extension. If you're towing a really heavy load, if you're towing a light load, it's not probably gonna matter much. Uh, so that is something to consider. Another thing to consider is when you get a flatbed, you are gonna have to kind of figure out how you're gonna wire your, your system for your, your truck camper. Um, as I said earlier, they don't come just set up just for a truck camper. So um, they do have like this particular bed has a, a gooseneck ball in it with a plug in there and so all the wiring is back there you just have to get the connectors to tie it in and mount it all in so uh, you may have to get somebody to do that for you if that's not something uh, you think you're capable of um, or you can just do it yourself like i did and just get under there draw some holes and do the wiring and figure it out and it's not a big deal but it is something you're gonna have to think about doing if you're gonna put a truck camper on the flatbed and the last and final thing to consider is depending on the length of your flatbed and the way that your camper is going to sit on it you may have to make some sort of bumper to go up against the headache rack for the the bumpers of the truck camper uh, to rest against so like on my particular case i'm about i believe it's about 10 inches off uh, off the headache rack uh, so you may have to kind of custom make your own setup as for the way that your truck camper is going to sit on there. Just another part that comes along with getting a flatbed, you got to figure out your whole setup between your camper and your bed and how, how it's all going to come together and sit on there and tie it down and, and uh, get everything on there good, solid, and, and safe for all your travel. So I hope this video helped. hope you found it enlightening if you if you're if thinking about getting a flatbed maybe i gave you some things to con consider i hope i did and i uh, appreciate you watching if you stuck around this long and we'll see you next time on runway roses bye bye